The Voigtlander Color Scopar 35mm f2.5 lens is a Leica M lens that really packs a punch. I only have one issue with it, but we'll get into that in just a bit. First though, I want to run through some of the specs for this lens, and then I'll show you some sample photos I've taken both on my Leica M6 and my Sony a7R 4 I got a lens converter from the Leica M mount to the Sony E converter for $100, but I'm going to compare it to a $15 lens converter, so subscribe if you want to see that. So let's talk about the build quality of this lens. It's actually incredible. It's an all metal build. You'll be hard pressed to find some plastic. The only real place that I see is in the back here. With this all metal build, the weight for the lens comes in at 5.4 ounces with the lens caps on and 4.7 ounces without the lens caps just for reference for both your traveling and also when it's on your camera. All this weight is packed into a lens that is about two inches tall, although you lose about half an inch when you actually remove these lens caps. It is two and a half inches wide, including this focus ring. So yeah, it's really small. I mean, it fits in the palm of my hand and especially compared to like, let's say a regular zoom lens from Canon, uh, it's already so much smaller. And this is it compared to my 35 millimeter prime lens from Sigma for my Sony E-mount. It's just absolutely puny compared to it. So yes, you can definitely refer to this as a pancake lens. So when you remove the front lens cap, you'll see the Voigtlander Color Scopar branding. You have the 35 millimeter marking that it's a prime 35 millimeter lens and f2.5 marking that the lowest aperture on this lens is f2.5. What you can actually see on this aperture ring here which ranges between 2.5 and 22. Just next to that is the focus ring, where the minimum focusing distance is about 0.7 meters. It seems to go a little bit below that, and of course it goes to infinity. And of course, when you remove the back lens cap, over here you'll see that this is the Leica M mount. On this lens as well, you'll see that there is no built-in lens hood. You will have to get a separate one. I saw one for $70 on B&H. You might be able to get a used one for cheaper, or you could even 3D print it. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. The last spec that I want to talk about is that all of this can be had for about $425 US dollars, uh, completely brand new, but I would actually recommend not buying it completely new unless you really want to, but if you don't mind getting a used lens, you can get them in great condition, uh, even like new, around $300 in the $300 range. Because it's a Leica M mount, we can mount this onto my Leica M6. So it's pretty simple. You line up the red dot over here on this lens with where there used to be a red dot on this camera, but basically the locking button. And then you just turn it, and there you go. As you can see, the whole body with this lens is honestly not much bigger. It's really small. This will be a really great sleek lens to have. All right, so now I want to tell you all a bit about my experience with this lens. Now, I actually love the form factor of this lens. I know I mentioned that, you know, sometimes I'd brush up against the aperture ring, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. So the images that I got from this lens are actually extremely sharp. When you get that focus right, you will get really great images, especially if you're doing portraits. It'll come out really well for that. One thing worth mentioning is that I did see some vignetting at the lower apertures, so between like 2.5 and 4, but in my opinion, it's not that big of a deal. I do actually like some vignetting in my photos. For the bokeh that I got, I did some test shots on my Sony camera just to see what sort of bokeh that I could get, and it was extremely round. I have I've seen other people online say that they found it a bit harsh, but to me, I didn't really think it was too bad. Now, in terms of the depth of field and the, min the minimum aperture of 2.5, this is actually the one issue that I personally have with it. I don't like that minimum aperture of 2.5, which is why I'm going to be upgrading to the Voigtlander Nocton 35mm f1.4. If the minimum aperture of 2.5 is not a big deal to you, then I think that this is honestly the better way to go. A downside of getting the f1.4 aperture lens versus this 2.5 is that this has a maximum aperture of 22 and the maximum aperture of the Nocton 35mm f1.4 is 16. I don't necessarily think that you'll need an aperture above 16. 
Again, with that 2.5 aperture, you don't get a significant amount of separation between what you have in focus and what isn't in focus. That was another uh, thing that led me towards that f1.4 lens. Now, another thing is that because of the lenses that I currently have for my Sony camera, where their minimum apertures are 1.2 and 1.4 and 1.8, I'm very used to those sort of fast lenses, so again, this might be different for you. Do I recommend this lens? Absolutely. I think, again, this was an amazing lens for me to start off on, and I think that this is also a lens that, had I not cared about the minimum aperture, I think I would keep this lens, because this thing just, is, it seems like a workhorse, especially with the quality of images that I've gone from it, from what I've seen other people get with it. Obviously what other people get with it is just way better than what I've been getting with it since I'm still learning. But it pushes through the size restrictions and the cost restri restrictions that it has on it and still performs and delivers great quality images. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't, please subscribe. If you like this video, if you have any comments or questions about it, please leave them down in the comments below. If you have any like recommendations of things that I should cover for the next lens review that I do, then please let me know because I would be more than happy to get those. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.